to see everyone here today for our monthly superstar interview and uh, we are in for such a treat for those of you that have been wondering how do you start your own real estate brokerage why start your own real estate brokerage how does all that come together we have for you two very smart professionals and one hails from the Austin area, where we know the market is just incredibly hot. And the other one hails from the Fort Worth area, where we also know the market is incredibly hot because the market is on fire all over Texas. And we are so pleased for all of our wonderful customers that have that opportunity to sell, sell, sell in this very exciting but very stressful market. And uh, I'm Rita Santa Maria. I'm the owner and founder of Champion School of Real Estate. And it is always my pleasure to be able to see you and say thank you for your business. I want you to know how much I personally appreciate your choosing to be a champion. I want you to know that every single superstar that I interview monthly are our own champions people. And um, I get their names because our on-site office managers and counselors have gotten to know these superstars. And I see their information in different business journals on how they're at the top of their game. And um, it's all free. So uh, let me just give a quick little shout out. Thank you, San Antonio. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, Fort Worth. Thank you, Plano. Thank you, Houston West, Houston Galleria, and certainly Houston North for the fact that we have so many wonderful students either in the classroom traditionally, because we're open for traditional classroom or virtual classroom, and certainly our online classroom. So Thank you for being there. Thank you to our president, Kimberly Didelowitz, who offices out of Plano, Kurt Noblock offices out of Austin, and Debbie Blazes out of our Houston North Campus. Without your business students, we would not have one. And we thank you so much for being a champion. So as I mentioned, today you are in for such a treat. We have how to open your own brokerage and as well, how to manage agents. So Michelle, I just want to say that I appreciate you being one of our teachers at our Austin campus. And thank you for that, Michelle Busby Bippus. She's <laughs> added a new last name. Yes, so I'm honored to teach. I love the campus in Austin and it's just such a great company. So I'm honored. Well, we are so happy to have you. You do an amazing job in that you teach all of our qualifying courses, and we actually ask you to teach just about anything that comes across the board because you are so very experienced. I want our students to know how you started out with being a team leader for Keller Williams, uh, Austin, and um, your growth getting to the point where you are today, leading, managing so many agents. And of course, as a team leader, it's the same as being a CEO of a company. So Michelle, give us a little bit of your background, if you would. Absolutely. So started in 2005. Um, I came in, learned the business for about a year did okay doing that. And I just found that agents kept coming to me and asking me questions and really enjoyed helping them, you know, strategizing with them about their business, started teaching classes in that office. 
and um, about two years in, moved, decided to go ahead and move into management and just enjoyed that so much. Loved helping the agents. It was just, uh, I loved it. I love it when they, you know, cause it's more like a servant leadership uh, opportunity. And I just really enjoyed that. Then in 2008, I decided to open up my own, uh, well, manage a franchise of Keller Williams, which is the Cedar Park location, open that out of my garage with 20 agents. <laughs> and that was, that was a wild ride, had a blast doing that, uh, grew that over the next four years to about 150 agents. And that has always been successful. It's still out there. Um, and then when I had my eight-year-old, I decided to be a mom again, went back into um, production and did that for a few years, and then went back into management over here at the Northwest office of Keller Williams in Austin. You're at the Northwest Austin uh, location, and um, you are the team leader. And how many agents are you leading on a daily basis? Right now we have 475. So I know that sounds like a lot, but I do not do it by myself by any means. I have a, a full team and executive leadership staff that is just amazing around me and I, I couldn't do it without them. So that is a huge group of people to take care of. <laughs> and I like herding cats. <laughs> It is like herding cats because everybody is an independent contractor. And obviously that means they are independent and everyone is their own boss. And yet we know that agents want to have a go-to person, someone that they can rely on to know that you're going to help them with negotiation of a contract, help them, especially with our brand new contracts that we have. And just to be there as well for good advice and You've been in the business for quite a long time, and uh, I know that they are so fortunate to have you. I want to ask you, while, again, we're a little bit of technical difficulty with Ashton, when she gets on camera, we'll move it over to her. Uh, it gives me the opportunity to ask you, when you are looking for a new agent, and when KW is searching for a new agent, what do you personally look for? Oh, that's a great question because I know that out in the field, it's always, oh, well, you know, they'll, they'll accept anything that's breathing. And I always tease with everybody. I'm like, no, we accept everything that's breathing and is ethical. <laughs> um, really, it's, I have found with being around so many agents that you cannot pick one personality type you cannot pick one trait over another that says that agent's going to be a great agent i've seen agents that are quiet and reserved be fantastic agents i've seen agents that are outgoing and gregarious be amazing agents um, so i really don't think it's a personality style or you know anything like that that creates that good agents i think it's all learnable skills and so it's just a matter, and I tell people when I'm teaching classes, there's no good or bad broker. It's the good, the best broker for you. And as long as it's something where you get set on fire when you go there and you are just passionate and you can, you know, just be yourself and succeed in being yourself, then it's going to come across in the rest of your business. And so... I don't really look for anything in particular other than, am I seeing that fire, that fire in the belly? Am I seeing that? Because if I'm seeing that, everything else is easy. Success comes in every size, shape, nationality, color, sex. It's all about you. It's what you put into it. And those are exactly what you are saying about what you've experienced when you're looking for people that uh, it's about the person and how much ambition they have and how much drive and frankly, how well they are at taking training because training is so important. Absolutely. So, without question, our students watching today can identify with each one of you. Ashton is the owner of Ashton Agency and uh, she is just a dynamo of a person. At a very young age, right after she graduated from TCU, she got her real estate license 
And uh, once upon getting her license, she went straight into real estate in the Fort Worth area and uh, decided after just about four or five years to open her own company. And today she is in the Fort Worth area. She likes to specialize in farm and ranch. Uh, her story is pretty impressive because, in fact, she has a Texas license, an Oklahoma license, a Colorado license, and specializes in all parts and areas of residential as well as farm and ranch. Ashton, I hope I gave you a good interview. I see you now. And uh, let our students know why you decided to go into real estate right after graduating from TCU and frankly, a little bit about you so that we personalize Ashton Tice. Thank you so much for that warm introduction and letting everyone know a little bit about my history. So I had a, a really impressive run of uh, marketing different positions and such whenever I was at TCU and got halfway through my senior year and realized that I really um, was going to have to do something that was entrepreneurial to uh, feel fulfilled um, independently. And real estate became that option for me. So I jumped in feet first, uh, went into full-time real estate just a month after I graduated from TCU. And then um, the rest is history. It's been a crazy ride here for the past seven years or so, but I have loved every single minute of it. Being in the Houston area, having started my first school in Houston North, the Ty's family name is so well known. And uh, I want to let everyone know you grew up in Hockley and the Tomball area, you have family. And something that I think is so very interesting is you were one of the participants in the amazing race. I think you hit like eight countries in 40 days. Can you give us a little snippet as to how that came together and the why? Because that is very unusual. Well, uh, how that came to be is it's all about who you know, right? And so I had had some friends that had been on some seasons previously, and they had shared about their experience, and it just sounded like the coolest opportunity. And so I decided to apply with one of my friends, and they ended up kind of having a little bit of a plot twist my season. And it was all individuals, so all strangers rather than the um the pre-existing relationship that you typically have on the amazing race. And it was, I have a, a love of travel and adventure. And of course, a half million dollars prize at the end was certainly motivating as well. So it was great for the experience, but it was also um, certainly a, a competition and something that I was excited to be able to go and give my best run at. Now, having grown up in the Hockley and I wanna say greater Houston area, what motivated you to start your company in the Fort Worth area? What was the draw for Fort Worth? Well, funny story there. So whenever I it was halfway through my senior year at TCU that I mentioned that I started considering real estate and I sat down with a family friend and my first broker and said, okay, I want to get into real estate. I know nothing about what I'm doing, but I want to move to Austin or to Dallas. And she said, well, here, Honey, just come and work for me for six months, and then I'll send you on your merry way. Uh, total bait and switch, because that is certainly not how real estate works. And um, after I got into real estate here, I fell in love with Fort Worth in a whole different way. Um, and, and it just became home. I put down my roots here and um, have really never looked back. My family is in the Brenham area now, so they are close enough for me to go and visit. But this is truly my home. Now, for our new people in the classroom and those experienced agents watching today, and I'm so excited, we have over 1,200 people enjoying our interview. For our new people, what two activities as a brand new person did you do, Michelle, and did you do, uh, Ashton, in order to get your business started? So I'll just start with Michelle. What would you suggest and what did you do to get your business started brand new? Yeah, my first thing <clears throat> that I always tell people is open houses. 
I mean, if you just do the math on open houses, it makes no sense not to do them. And when I say open houses, I don't mean put out a sign the day of and read a book while you're in the house. That's not going to get you anything, right? You're going to have to do the work ahead of time. And so start on Wednesday, you know, figure out which house you're going to do, make sure you drive the areas, pick up your signs, put out any signs that you can, you know, figure out the rules of the neighborhood, obviously, and put out the signs if you can ahead of time. I always say, especially in Austin, commuter traffic is huge. And so if you can even put out a sign saying open house coming this Saturday, put it out during the commuter time. Because one of the signs I always had when I had, you know, uh, open houses back in the day was, uh, if you lived here, you'd already be home. And in Austin with the traffic, it was huge. It was a huge draw. And so they would just come in. And so even evening and afternoon open houses work pretty well here if you're in a thoroughfare. So that is always a really great opportunity. Um, the second one is database. I mean, they already love and trust you. Your first, you know, six out of 10 deals is probably going to be from someone in your database. So, you know, call them, talk to them, ask about them. It'll end up having a conversation about you. And then you can tell them about your new career and what you're doing. And, you know, that's going to be a great uh, segue into a, a wonderful career that you and working with people that you enjoy. <laughs> You know, you don't have to always get new people. You can always go with the people that you already know and like to hang out with. Now, with the market being so robust in Austin, with basically little inventory as far as less than one month of inventory sitting uh, out there for sale, when you do have an open house, I just am curious, how do you take care of literally the numbers of people that want to come through on the open house? Yeah, right now they're doing appointments. So open houses by appointments, especially with the social distancing requirements and whatnot that people are wanting to have in their open house. And then, so you just schedule out ahead of time. The other opportunity is just, you know, you sign up first come first serve. So you just get a line out the door and it's, it's pretty outrageous right now. A lot of times it will already be under contract by the time you happen to be able to do your open house. <laughs> so it's just, it's a very strange market right now. And you just do what you got to do to make sure that you can get the best deal for your client and backup deals. So even if you have something under contract, that doesn't mean you wouldn't do an open house on it and you wouldn't market yourself. Um, there's no reason, if you, even if you have an offer, not to do that. Absolutely. It's an exciting time, but it's also a little frustrating for buyers for sure. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, we love the fact that we do have a different type of energy going on in our market and real estate. So Ashton, with your experience for our new people, what did you do to get started? And uh, what are your suggestions to a brand new person to get their feet off the ground and maybe have a jump start? So one thing that I did for my first six months was I drove and got lost everywhere in Fort Worth. As I mentioned before, I had to learn Fort Worth in a totally new way whenever I got into real estate, even if you're local to an area, really understanding the neighborhoods and pockets and being familiar with it is extremely important. And the second part of that is to also go and it's a little different now, but back in the day, it was previewing property. So being able to go and pre-screen them and just walk through them. Um, I probably previewed 20 plus properties a week just to get familiar with what price points translated to what product in different areas and to just be more familiar with different eras, styles, and such of homes. So that definitely helped me get that real life, hands-on, in-person um, exposure to properties that, that doesn't come otherwise without just experience. So that certainly helped. And then to echo what Michelle said about your network, that has certainly been the name of my game since the beginning is to work within your network. Your network is your net worth. Never eat lunch alone. Never eat dinner alone. Try to schedule yourself out to be able to get in front of people and have organic conversation about what you're doing with your career and how excited you are to be starting on this side um, and ask for that business, but make sure that people are very, very aware of what you're doing and be able to get in front of them. So Ashton, I know that after, and you can tell me, I want to say five years in real estate, you decided to open your business 
And oh my goodness, when you tell me you opened your business January of 2020, right before the pandemic, I have a couple of, uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations and what a wonderful story that you're able to tell that you grew your own brokerage during the pandemic. But what was it like deciding how you wanted to open your office? What type of management you wanted to have for your people coming in? Where you wanted to locate? What your colors would be? How you would brand yourself? All of those great questions. Can you share with our students how you made those decisions and why? I certainly can, and there's a lot of different directions I can take that right now, uh, but it it was about six months of really intensive planning uh, leading up to being ready to launch my company, from financial valuations to the branding, which took a very long time and a whole lot of time, energy, effort, and collaboration. Um, and it's kind of funny you ask about the brand colors and such. That is something that I really struggled with for several months, and I kept trying to have some sort of... Uh, bright, bold color. And um, ultimately, I was sitting at dinner with a friend of mine, and she I was kind of voicing my frustration and how much it had been difficult to find the right fit for what my brand was going to be. And she looked over at her purse that was a just a, like a, a cognac brown. And she said, why do you need to have a color? What if you just had a whole palette and tone for the business? So from that, it produced this really cool neutral color palette and um, bringing in elements of wood, leather, steel, and these natural elements. Um, as far as the brand and the company, I wanted a quality of or quantity approach, being a high-end uh, brokerage, a boutique brokerage that could offer very specialized and um, diversified services in that way. And I wanted it to feel very um, authentic and very real and very fresh um, where it didn't necessarily feel like a real estate brokerage brand. Very, very helpful and very interesting. If you were to give a style on your management style, uh, could you give us a description of what that style might be? I would say that I am a visionary leader and problem solver. So I look, sit down with each of my agents and help them create their own independent business plan specific to their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and the things that they are really going to flourish with. And so in that way, it is creating a a vision in that business plan, and then also helping them overcome difficult um, difficult challenges and things as they come up. Um, I like to say that I specialize in the weird. So anything that is a unique or challenging transaction, I have probably done it. And I like to be able to bestow that, that knowledge and experience and creative thinking to my agents as well. So I do not believe that there is one size fits all. And here is your manual for how to be successful in real estate. I do not believe that at all. So I think that it takes that independent hands-on collaboration with the agents to be able to lead, motivate, and inspire them, keep them accountable, but making sure that they are using all of their personal toolkit and resources and personality to really be successful in the business. Very, very informative. And I know, Michelle, with a couple of hundred people every day that you're also managing and being the leader for, what are some of the challenges that you have In order to, as Ashton very well put it, it's not one size fits all. It's something for each different person. How do you deal with that with so many different personalities in your office? It's a great question. I think that you have to be willing, like she said, and this is something that her and I, I think, have in common is the strategy behind it. You have to be like some people see, oh, here's a way to get to A to Z. I feel like her and I both, there's the 22 different ways that I see just in this this particular scenario that you could take it. And you have to be willing to allow them their way. Even though you may have done it a whole different way, it doesn't mean that they won't be successful. And so you can't want it more than they want it. So that's one of the big challenges is, you know, you have to get to Z regardless or you're not going to be successful. So I can help you get there as long as you have like that fire in their belly, you're passionate about it, you want to succeed. 
well, I'll take you down any road you want to. And as a visionary leader like Ashton is, or I would say even myself, more of a servant leader, you just have to figure out, hey, what is your personality? Okay, here's 10 things that have been done that are that work really well with that personality style. How do you feel about these? Let's try something out. If that doesn't work, let's try something else out. What about these three different scenarios? How would you like to try one of those out? What are the risk rewards? Are you risk adverse or are you totally okay with throwing some, you know, throwing it to the wind and figuring it out as we go? And then you adapt to whatever style works best for that agent. Um, Cause there's just, there's a million ways to be successful in real estate. I always tell people the only way that you lose at real estate is to quit. Just don't quit. Eventually you're gonna succeed. <laughs> That is certainly the truth. Don't give up. I love that each of you brought out your different style. Michelle, you said you were more of a servant leader. And Ashton, you're more of a visionary leader. And when our instructors are teaching, as you know, Michelle, we tell new people, interview with at least three companies so that you can find out where do you fit best. And so much of that does have to do with how you interact with people and what particular office situation works best for you. And I love it today that Ashton is what I would call a boutique company and you are representing a major franchise. And that really wasn't by accident. I wanted to get both sides because in our world with many, many offices to choose from, there really is a niche for each person. On the training side, we emphasize with new people, go with a company that gives training. Ashton, what kind of training do you offer for your new people? What type of ongoing training? And do you believe in coaching, business planning? Tell us how that would work if I were interviewing with you. Sure. To start with, uh, being on my phone here, my phone keeps ringing. I apologize for that. Uh, to start with, though, we do bi-weekly trainings that are a blend of outside instructors and then also classes that I um, create and teach the curriculum on. So that ongoing training um, has included everything from having an appraiser came in and visited with us and gave us all sorts of of, of incredible knowledge in a Q&A setting a few weeks ago. Um, we have a class coming up that is how to video like a pro to be able to do high quality marketing and advertising just from your phone and things of that nature. Um, whenever it comes to the business planning side, that is something with being a boutique and being a broker that is really accessible to my agents. I can sit down and create those unique uh, business plans and strategies for them. And then I believe strongly in apprenticeship or working under a more tenured agent whenever you're new in the business. Um, I learned things the hard way by trying to teach myself a lot over the years. And then um, whenever it got to the point that my business had hit, hit a point where I needed um, additional support, bringing in newer agents to be able to work with me and be able to truly be in the trenches and in the weeds beside me seemed to be the strongest and fastest way for new agents to really be able to learn in the field. So I think it's a combination of ongoing training, um, having a broker office manager that's very invested in your personal business. And then I really think that the trifecta there is whenever you first get into the business for the first 6, 12, 18 months, I think it's very wise to try to find a tenured agent that you can lend support to, but then you will get the experience and exposure from them that you otherwise would not have. Absolutely. Mentorship is huge. And uh, the fact that you highly believe in that, it's great to know that within your team, that your agents that are producing already are happy to have that newbie to come in so that they can mentor with the experienced agent. It's very positive. And um, I can tell that you enjoy doing part of the training as well, if not a lot of it. And um, it's so good for our students to hear what's out there and why is it important for me to have training? Michelle, what do you do at Keller Williams in order to help that new person? Uh, <clears throat> Keller Williams training is pretty out there. We've, you know, everybody talks about our training. I, I saw a meme the other day talking about the different brokerages and it's like, it's the, the unofficial training program of the industry. 
you know, so <clears throat> it is something that we do hang our hat on. What I don't think a lot of people realize is that it is constantly changing. What I learned when I first came in in 2005 is, I mean, I don't even think there's an iteration of that even out there anymore because just so much has changed. And like Ashton was saying, you have to always be manipulating it to fit the changes that are happening in the industry. So you have to be willing to personalize it for each person and then personalize it for the industry that you're in at this moment. Um, I love when she was talking about mentorship because we are not each other's competition anymore. Brokerages have to bind together and work together and, you know, hey, how can I help, you know, Ashton's business? How can she, you know, come in and maybe do a luxury mastermind within Keller Williams and all of us will work together to increase the industry and the professionalism that's in the industry, because if we're not working together, we're not going to win, right? We have much bigger factors play at play than, you know, each other. We, we all need to, you know, work together and uh, come up with the best everything. And then we do have training for all levels. I love that about our brokerage. Um, and I think that no matter if, if you are going to start your own brokerage for everybody watching, make sure that you have a pathway to success for your agents. So whether it be, it doesn't necessarily have to be something you put together either. I mean, Champions has amazing classes and you can send them to the classes at Champions. Um, one of the ones that I love the best is Powerhouse. And that's, that's pretty much for your first six months, have somebody you know, everybody in your brokerage, if you're going to join our brokerage, you know, go to powerhouse within your first six months. And when you do, we'll take, you know, we'll pay for it. And then we'll take it back out of your first deal. You know, if you don't have the funds to do that, because you're a brand new brokerage, I mean, however, you have to make it work, but make sure your client or your clients, which are your agents at this point, um, are taking care of their growth, their personal growth, their professional growth. Um, you're not going to win without growing personally. So you need that. I love the fact that you said we're in this together. It's not a competition. It's sort of a false rumor that, or rather it is a rumor period when new people believe as they walk into the school that there are so many offices and they all don't get together or get along. And my goodness, with all these offices, you know, is there room for me? And yet, I love the fact that you explain we all depend on each other, and it is absolutely an important part of our business that we have offices that have niches in different areas and actually help each other in so many different ways because there's lots of opportunity for everyone. Ashton, I know, and thank you for that shout out to Champions on Powerhouse. I also love that SAE course myself. Um, Ashton, I know you have your accredited luxury home specialist designation, and you have your negotiating specialist designation, and I thank you for getting those designations and for being one of our champions. I want to ask you, when you took courses and knowing the direction that you've gone and the direction being you have a license in Oklahoma, you have a license in Colorado, you have a license in Texas, what moved you into the direction of farm and ranch and what courses really helped you the most to jumpstart your career? So farm and ranch was a natural fit for me and it was really opportunistic whenever I got put on my first uh, farm and ranch deal, I was actually brought in more so for a very, very large uh, $7 million listing uh, for marketing purposes. I, With my marketing background, they felt like it could be a, a great resource to them on that specific deal. And from there, I ended up just naturally and organically becoming the in-house farm and ranch agent for that company that I was with. And I, I fell in love with it. Um, I did take the farm and ranch course from champions, which I think if you have any interest in getting into farm and ranch, it is a great overview to be able to give you just a, just a look into what this industry, this side of the industry is like, but I will tell you, it took me years to really be able to wrap my head around farm and ranch because 
while every single residential property or commercial property is different, land is especially different whenever you're talking about topography, water, water rights, uh, mineral rights, uh, agriculture, wildlife, everything that goes into it, it, it really is an extremely unique um, industry. And now working in multiple states as well, that has been a whole new learning curve for me. Um, and even seeing the, the crazy thing I've been dealing with recently is understanding the differences of, of water rights and how we handle them here in Texas versus in Colorado. It's extremely different and has been um, certainly a learning lesson. So I would say that regardless of how this is applicable to the entire industry, Regardless of how tenured the agents are, there, there is always something to learn and you're always going to be a student whenever it comes down to real estate and trying, especially getting into these unique subsets of it. So always be willing to learn, never think that you know it all, because I promise you to this day, I still definitely do not know it all and I'm learning something every single day. We have so many people that say, well, is she just in farm and ranch when they hear about someone? And truth is, how many different areas do you really touch on a daily basis with your agent? What, what do they, what listings do they take and what buyers do they work with? Can you give us an idea of the overview of what goes on in your office, Ashton? Sure. Well, um, I said this earlier, we're, we're certainly diversified and have a ton of variety in terms of our business. Right now, one of my agents is working on a chicken farm deal uh, that's actually involved with Tyson. Um, we have a, another deal that we just closed that was a luxury waterfront lake house on Eagle Mountain Lake. Um, I'm about to close a 9,600 acre ranch in uh, Pagosa Springs, Colorado right now. And then we have another one that's about to close that's a starter home at 309,000 up in the colony. So lots and lots of variety in that way, primarily in the uh, residential realm, residential independent personal purchases, but then also on the investment side too. We have a ton of investors and builders that we work with on lot acquisition, new home sales on the flip side of that, um, but then also finding investment properties in the form of, not that they really exist right now, but flip properties or buy and hold properties for rentals. And then on the farm and ranch side, sky is kind of the limit. I have worked on everything from sod farms to high fenced exotic hunting ranches to um, just recreational getaways to cattle ranches. So we definitely keep it interesting here. I wanted to bring that forward because sometimes we get the idea that, oh, if you go into residential, you choose sort of a price range you're going to be selling in and you stay in residential. And one of the very challenging and fun things about a career in real estate is you go into it and all of a sudden you realize there is like this plate of all different opportunities that you can move into. You need to learn how to deal with those. And again, one of the ways and that we uh, definitely know will help you is to take one of our designation courses that might flow with that. And I know Ashton mentioned we have the CE course in Farm and Ranch that Dave Wyatt teaches, and he's a longtime broker out of uh, Washington County, Brenham, does a super job with that. And so does Shelly, who works with Dave on that course. But it's so much fun listening to everything that you're doing, knowing as well that over in Michelle's part of the woods in Austin, same thing going on in her office. How many different opportunities do agents have to specialize in your Austin office, Michelle? What's what's available? Um, yeah, if you if it involves real estate and you need a real estate license to do it, you can do it. <laughs> and I'm sure it's the same way with Ashton. Um, we have an, a we have a great thriving commercial division. I think we have um, 14 people in it right now. We're trying to grow it to 22 people. Um, we really like we have a great luxury division um, in Austin as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, farm and ranch. We have people who do that. A little bit of everything. Property management. So whatever it takes a real estate license to do, you can do it. <laughs> when we talked about helping each other, one great uh, example of that would be if Michelle had a buyer that possibly wanted to buy in the Fort Worth area, the fact that she knows Ashton, she could refer if she didn't want to do it herself. Same for Ashton, if she didn't want to work in the Austin 
uh, greater area. She could refer, agents refer business all over the state. But, um, you know, you both are so beautiful. You speak so eloquently. And I want to also say on Ashton's side, you have to be very flexible in real estate. And with the different challenges she had this morning with technology, which we love, but sometimes it's like, what happened? She just went with the flow. And you have to do that in real estate to be successful. Not every day is going to be absolutely perfect. That being said, think of a challenge you might have had in your career, uh, whether you know, it was something that you weren't prepared for, were prepared for, or just an example of a day in the life of how things may be very, very interesting. Uh, Michelle, do you want to give us your example? Sure. I think I was actually just that we were masterminding with some top agents yesterday. And one of the conversations we're having was that she it lost a deal and how much that was still affecting her. And although she has all of this other business and she, you know, just that one deal that she lost, she was focusing on. And I think that um, and I told her, you know, I don't think that ever changes. I think that that's just part of the business. I think learning how to, you know, move through that is it, you know, keeping the, the emotions between the lines. When you care about your clients and you care about your agents, sometimes that's the biggest challenge is that you can get into the ditch with them. And that's not effective and it doesn't do them a bit of good. So you really do have to... Uh, Keep people motivated, engaged, moving forward, and be that way yourself. Sometimes the only smile that someone gets is when they walk past you. And so just keeping that smile on and then allowing them to live their, their truth and meet them where they are. I think for agents, that's really big because especially now and through COVID, it was it was difficult. There were people coming in, they were fearful. They were, you know, what's going to happen with the business? What's going to happen with my health? And so I always say I'm a part-time therapist because I do have an open door policy and people know I ever, all my agents have my cell phone. So people do text me at all times of night. And sometimes they just need someone to say it's a, it'll be okay. And I think that that's um, you know, when you, when you get to that point where you, you can take your emotions out of it and you can be the leader that people need you to be. I think that that is where it really starts to shine. And that challenge is, is easier to overcome at that point. Without question, you are an in-house therapist <laughs> in your position. People love to come to you to help lift them up and also work through bad situations. For sure, the pandemic caused us to do our business so differently with lots of FaceTime, virtual tours, and closings. And we feel like we're coming out of that now, thank goodness. And uh, you just really wear many hats as the leader of that particular company and office. So Ashton, is there a particular uh, event or situation that you might be able to tell our students about to give them an idea of how things might go in your office on a daily basis? Anything outstanding to mention? Oh, I've been brainstorming here on what was going to be my best story. Uh, I, I said earlier that I specialize in the weird, and I, uh, I I do believe that you have to be very versatile and malleable and, and willing to pivot and adjust because every deal, every situation is going to be different. And there's things that I'm still doing every single week that I'm like, huh, didn't think I would be ever doing this in my business. And here we are. Uh, one example that comes to mind is I was working a deal in Oklahoma on a ranch that took about 10 months from the time that I stepped on the ranch to the time we closed. It was a really messy bankruptcy deal. And this was a first, and this is COVID era as well. Um, after we had gone through three or four rounds of call for offers on it, I eventually had to bid in a Zoom auction with the uh, trustee for the bankruptcy court on it. So that was certainly a first. And you just got to go, you have to roll with it. I mean, you never know what um, what curveball real estate is going to throw you. And I think that that's in all aspects of it. 
So I think that just being being malleable and and, and fluid and having um, the ability to think creatively is an absolute must in this um, in this business because every single day is different. Uh, my schedule every single day has something new and unique in it, and so being able to switch topics and switch thought processes many, many, many times throughout the day is uh, very much a necessity for a brokerage owner, manager, or an individual agent. You tell me about that experience when we talked earlier in the week, and I just have to say how impressed I was that during a pandemic, you were able to go through a large sale that was the outcome of a bankruptcy and to get everything Signed, sealed, and delivered within 10 months is just really admirable. Congratulations on that. And to do an auction on Zoom is just so very new, different. There are so many takeaways from the pandemic in the last 14 months that I feel like we will all continue to use in our business. But uh, that is such an incredible story to be able to not only do business out of state, but get everything completed. I know some of our people are looking at you going, well, what does she wear when she's out doing farm and ranch? Is she in her boots and jeans? And you're having told me how you grew up on ATVs and riding horses and fishing. I have a feeling that you probably dressed in your jeans and boots, correct? It is Wranglers and insulated snake proof boots because those snakes are no joke whatsoever. So high up to the knee boots, but they are so thick and so insulated because I am not about to get bit by a snake out there. I had forgotten about the snake aspect of that. (laughs) Uh, Definitely there are all kinds of sides to selling real estate. Let me ask each of you, knowing how very busy you are and knowing the time that's involved with your company, about how many hours a week do you feel like a new person needs to devote to get their career started? And then if you would let us know about how many hours per week you work and um, give us a little insight on that, Michelle. Oh, man, this is a tough one. So I've gone through many different iterations of who I am as a realtor. So when I first got into the business, I was what I call a pajama realtor, meaning I just sat around in my pajamas half the day and was like, oh, this is great. And and I quickly realized that was not going to cut it for the success that I wanted to have. So then I started coming in the office and luckily there was enough people in the office to where I could kind of learn by osmosis. I would sit in the work room and I would let other people talk around me and I would just take in what they were saying. And so I could hear the conversations they were having with their clients. And then when I was with my clients, some of that would just accidentally slip out and it was and it worked. And so I did that for a while. I think that the the time on task over time is really what happened. So I learned how to be extremely focused. And as I got older, it's easier to focus on what matters. Um, and not just be busy, but actually be focused on the action and income producing activities. And so if you, what you focus on is going to expand and your business, it grows to the extent you do. So you, if you focus on growth, usually your business is going to grow with you. And so I believe that you don't have to work a million hours. I mean, I have five children, so, and they range in ages from five to 22. So it's not that this is going to be, oh, all encompassing. I remember working 15 to 20 hours a week when I had my eight-year-old and I did over $5 million in sales that year, easy breezy, you know, made over a hundred thousand dollars. So, and that was in 2012. So that was not, you know, pre recession that was you know right at the tail end of the recession so it's not that you have to put a lot of hours in it's what you're doing to, during those hours that matters and as long as you're focused on the right activities the money's going to show up perfect perfectly said so do you take time off every weekend for yourself or do you work over the weekend or how do you work that with your five children congratulations 
Thank you. Uh, yeah, I work about 8.30 to 5.30 every day. Uh, however, I, I do get the calls at night and if things are crazy, I do have an amazing staff as I, as I mentioned earlier. And then the training, and I know Ashton probably knows this too, the better you train, the less conversations you're having off the cuff. And they really do learn what they're supposed to learn in the training. And so the questions are very pointed to a specific deal, the weird deals, the crazy one-offs. And so those are easy to strategize around. And I actually find, I, I love that part of the jobs. Like, okay, what are we going to do? How do we get you into where you need to be? And how do we get this for your client? And those are the fun times. And so, um, yeah, I mean, you kind of are on call all the time. However, it's, it's not anything, they really do respect your time if, if you train them well and, and, you know, we always treat, teach people how to treat us. And so if they know, hey, you know, reach out to me, see if I'm available. If one of my kids is in, you know, having an issue, I'm not going to be there, but I will call you as soon as, as soon as the fit is over. <laughs> Ashton, what about yourself? How many hours do you think a new person needs to give to real estate? And give us a day in the life of how many hours per week you need as a new brokerage owner. So my answer is going to be a little different than Michelle's. Um, whenever I first started as a new agent, I was working no less than 60 hours a week. I really just took a deep dive into the industry and wanted to get uh, more knowledgeable and competent very, very quickly. So I went a very intensive route there at the beginning. And I would encourage new agents to commit to it being a 40 plus hour week at the very, very least if you want to aggressively start your career jumpstart your career. Now, I've had all sorts of ebbs and flows in my business over the years and have had a consistent struggle with work-life balance and making sure that I shut it off and I have a, a real stop time in my day. So that's something that I've certainly gotten better with in recent years. And then I went and started my own company and then it was a whole other demand of time on that side. Um, I would say at at the peak, I was working 70 or 80 hours a week, but I think that a manageable, realistic time now is probably in the 50 to 65 hours a week. Perfect. Just that it gives our students an opportunity to know what to expect from obviously these two very successful ladies that started out just like each one of you. At what point, Ashton, did you realize that you now started your real estate career and gee, I think I'm okay. I've got my career established. I want to say maybe that aha moment where it came together and you thought I have a business now. Do you have a moment in time where that happened to you? So kind of funny story there. Uh, my everyone, not everyone, I hear it commonly that two years is kind of the mark where you've gone through your grind of the first two years, you're building up your clientele and you start to see that repeat business and it changes the way that you've been pursuing and creating your business. Well, I did feel that in my business that my two year mark came up whenever I was filming Amazing Race. So that threw a big old wrench into my plans and I had to, with being gone for 40 days and I moved three weeks before that and just had a bunch of craziness going on. Um, I really felt my my point in which I had mama I made it was probably at about two and a half years into the business and at that point I knew it was time for me to expand my team and bring in some support and I hired my first assistant at that point um, the business was still challenging certainly and it's always going to be challenging but I think that you're the types of challenges at first it's getting familiar and knowledgeable with the business and getting comfortable with it then um, it transforms into uh, being able to convert your repeat clients and your past clients and then once you get super, super busy, it's a huge challenge of being able to juggle everything and to be able to keep that work-life balance with a consistent pipeline. I love when you said uh, earlier, the three of us got together on Tuesday and just got to know each other. And um, I love the fact that you had shared at that time how it's just about the person and knowing that you have to make that commitment to get started and knowing that your family has to know what to expect in order to get started and to change careers it happens so quickly if you're changing from a career into real estate or loan appraisal inspection but 
you have to devote that time to get that career started. And I can't even imagine you, and I can tell that you have a lot of ambition and excitement and enthusiasm. You were starting your career, but then you had this great opportunity to go and be on HDTV with Amazing Race. That is so cool. And just things happen. We have kids that are involved in activities. We have graduations. We have birthday parties. The other side that I personally love about real estate is being able to say to your client, you just have another appointment and make the appointment for another time because it happens to be that child's birthday, basketball game, and no one knows otherwise. And that's a cool thing about being an independent contractor. So moving over to you, Michelle, having known you personally for so many years, how long into the business was it when you realized I've got this together and I'm a success? I can make a living at this, a good living. Yeah, I think it was probably about three years, like Ashton was saying. Um, before then, I was getting it and I and I had I sold 17 houses my first year. So obviously I did OK, but I don't feel like I really understood myself as being this, you know, top tier realtor. I think the minute it, it really um, kind of sunk in was when other people started telling me that, uh, that I was affecting their lives. And so especially, um, I think I was on stage at, I think I was 28 or 29 years old. So it was a while back. Um, but I was about three or four years in the business. And I remember I was on stage and there was, it was a huge event, 10,000 or so people. And they were interviewing me about leadership. And I remember thinking like, when I was asked to do it, what the heck? And then I found out that my agents had suggested me. And then afterward, a lot of them were like, oh my goodness, everything you've done for me. And then other leaders were coming up and saying, you know, when you said this to me, it affected me. And I think that really when you realize how much you affect others, I think that was when I got it. You know, um, success that for me is when others, when I'm helping others, I think that really when it, when it all came together. And it's such a cool feeling. I was actually talking to my mom about this uh, this week was because someone did the same thing, uh, you know, did a shout out to her publicly. And I was like, see what you're doing matters. And that's, you know, when that kind of stuff happens, it really, really does. That's when you, that's why you do this. I mean, that's why you work the long hours. That's why you do the hard deals. That's why you're willing to, you know, put your license on the line for other people and why you're willing to, you know, sit there and just pour into their businesses is because of those moments when they turn around and they say, I couldn't have done it without you. It just, it's, it's amazing that feeling. This is so good for our Gen Y people that are in class right now because they worry about their age, A-G-E, and how that's going to affect them. And I want to say to them, I hope they heard you were 28 years old, you were on stage, you were given awards. I also know, and I'm going to brag on Ashton, she was 26 years old, and out of a couple of hundred agents in the office, she was number one for that year when she was 26. So age does not play a factor. It's exactly what each of you have said. It's how far do you want to go? How successful do you want to be? I would like to ask you as our final question, which I hate this because it's always so much fun for me and beneficial and always makes me so proud to be able to interview two of our statewide superstars. But for our final question, what insight have you learned over these years growing your business that maybe you didn't know way back when you were just starting out in your career. Ashton, any points you can give us on insight you've learned about yourself? Well, I think we touched on this earlier too, but getting into real estate, I had no idea how many different niches and opportunities there would be within the industry to really be able to customize it and make it yours. And that's where the business has become extremely rewarding for me is finding those niches that I absolutely love that are my passions. That being the farm and ranch side and construction and design, especially that is, that is really where it's like, oh my gosh, this is me. I really, really love this aspect of what I'm doing. And it really be becomes that passion side of it for you. So as you're entering into a career in real estate, 
Um, don't put the blinders on. Look at all of the options. Look at the industry as a whole and try to find those opportunities and find the ones that fit you best. Because I think that's really when it uh, it especially clicked for me and became rewarding in a whole different way was whenever I was able to find those um, those avenues to be able to really take a deep dive into. And what about you, Michelle? What have you learned about yourself over these years? Uh, I think motivation is, I, I got this quote from Zig Ziglar, but it's the, when this started showing up, I was like, man, he's so right. <laughs> so look up Zig Ziglar if you haven't heard for all you young, young people out there. He's amazing. But he said something to the effect of motivation is like a shower. You have to do it every day. You have to put it on every day. And I really do believe that like staying positive in our business is sometimes extremely hard. You have a deal where you're just in the weeds about and, you know, everybody's fighting and you don't know if you're going to get what you need for your clients and you're feeling emotionally run down and your clients feeling emotionally run down. And, you know, sometimes plugging, being able to plug in to your office or your broker or calling Ashton or calling me or going to a champions class, even, you know, going out there and getting something that is filling your bucket can change that motivation and change the trajectory of your business. So anytime that you are in that lone wolf, because as much as we're about relationships in real estate, and that's what it's about, you really sometimes feel like a lone wolf. So plug in, plug into champions, plug into your brokerage, plug into any kind of education that you can and fill your bucket. And then it's kind of like putting your mask on first before you're putting it on the other person so that you can make sure that you help the other person. So in order to help your clients or in order to help your agents, you know, put your mask on first, fill your bucket, stay motivated and, you know, make buddies in the business. We are not each other's, you know, rivals. We are each other's safety net. And if I ever have anything, now I have somebody in Fort Worth who I can call, who I know, I know her business ethic. I know how she's going to work. I feel confident saying, Hey, you're going to buy this, that, the other, and you're in Fort Worth, you know, talk to this woman. She's amazing. So I think that, you know, just binding together and keeping each other motivated and reaching out if you need motivation, especially in any of these times that we're going through. Thank you to both of you. You are such amazing professional examples of champions. I'm so proud to be able to say that you are our champions. So Michelle Busby Bippus with Keller Williams Austin, thank you so much. And Ashton Tice, Ashton Tice with Ashton Agency in Fort Worth, I thank you so much and all of the great information that you've given to our students. I know they've been trying to write it down. A reminder, it will be on YouTube tomorrow. Thanks to Joseph Owen, who's in charge of all of our videoing. I want to also encourage everyone, our successful strategies books, volume one, volume two, are great professionals that tell us their story in each chapter. And for experienced people that want to go to the next level, for new people that want to know how to be an Ashton, how to be a Michelle, these books are awesome. And I hope and believe in a year we'll have these two lovely ladies' story in our successful tendencies of real estate champions. And then 30 Days to Success, my book for new people, day by day, how to bring your business from the beginning to a jumpstart career. Next month, we have how to successfully be your own boss as an independent agent. And out of San Antonio, we have Kat Lodge. She's with Deanne Harper in the San Antonio area. And out of Houston with Brock and Foster, we have Susan Brock. It will be on June the 10th. Can't wait to interview these two ladies. But again, how can you ever have the opportunity to get to know and meet someone who had the courage to start their own brokerage? Thank you, Ashton Tice, for your great insight today and for your inspiring, inspiring information. And Michelle Bosby, and I've got to get that new last name right, Bippus, <laughs> who 
every day manages a couple of hundred agents and keeps them motivated and brings in new people and trains them. How very insightful to be able to hear from you today. So go to the Champions YouTube, bring down all of our one hour YouTubes, and it will certainly motivate you as well. Our goal at Champions is to help you succeed. And we do that with great teachers. We do that with a great prep course, wonderful CE, but free opportunities like our monthly superstar interviews. So have a wonderful end of your class, end of your day. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Ashton. I'm so, Thank so you. proud of you. Such a Bye -bye. pleasure to be with here with both of you. Yes, this was an absolute blast and honor, and I am so grateful that we got the chance to chat here today, and I hope that this is some useful information for all of you that are in process of getting started in this career. Love it. Great, great professional, ladies. Thanks. Thank you, Rita.